Hey, welcome back. Today we have another tier list involving Grail units. Now, I believe that since I already went over like Gen 1 units and Lethality and yada yada yada, I figured I'd also give my thoughts on Grail units that I believe are worth investing into. I gotta preface this again like I did last time. No matter what you see on the charts, if you want to build a unit that you like, that should be your highest priority. I'm not here to dictate what you should and shouldn't. I'm just here to be as objective as possible and give my overall thoughts on what units I believe should be invested into when it comes to using your grails, especially since they are a pretty luxurious commodity given that they do take a long time to build up, on top of the fact that you just get a limited amount of units from their debut, whether that's two from Tempest Trial or three from Grand Hero Battles. Granted, some Grand Hero Battle units can get more reruns, but I digress. In any case, I'm here to discuss my overall thoughts on the best Grail units you should invest into. And that being said, let's just get started. Now, I noticed despite the fact that I said that I couldn't fit the entire chart on the last video, I still got a lot of comments and questions regarding certain placements in Gen 1 because of the fact that the chart just wasn't available. So I'm going to try and make it so it is viewable completely this time around. But in any case, we're basically going to be going over the best units, solid investments, and good investments. We may also gloss over the rest of the units, but I don't believe they need as much coverage as the first three tiers, personally. But in any case, we could get started with the first four, those being Arden, Eldigan, Young Innis, and Kemp. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's all alphabetical order. But anyway, back on track. The first unit that we have is Arden. I gotta say, Arden probably aged the best out of any unit in the entire game in my opinion, solely due to how much stuff has come out in this past year for him. Starting out with a refine that granted in Dual Phase Brave was already pretty good. However, the problem that he had initially was that he had no way of utilizing it to his full potential, which is why he wasn't considered nearly as good as he is now. After his refine, we ended up getting skills such as Near Save and then eventually the Steady Breath Seal, which did allow him to open up his B slot to his PRFB follow-up ring. And essentially, he just got so many skills to the point where he is considered one of the best Near Save armors in the entire game. And for this reason, I have to put him up at the bet one of the best investments simply due to the fact that if you do build him correctly, he's only ever going to be fighting melee foes, which includes basically every unit that targets his defense, minus dragons. And because of the steady breath seal on dual phase brave, no matter what, he's always at least getting two attacks out, meaning that he can always trigger Ignis as long as there's no guard present. And because he also has guard in his weapon, he can also slow the cooldown of the foe, meaning they can't get a special off of him unless they have some sort of special acceleration. But even if that were the case, the second hit will always be an Ignis, again, provided that there isn't any guard effects present. And he should be able to take out all of his foes with no issue whatsoever. And thanks to the fact that his HP set is actually really, really high, he shouldn't struggle against dragons that much either. However, if you are concerned, you could always swap out Attack Defense Unity for Close Defense 4. That's what I run personally, as it does help out a bit with his res stat. And then you can also run him on Light Season to give him extra res from air. But generally speaking, Arden is definitely one of the best investments you can make in the game right now in terms of Grails, because of the fact that he is just that good of a near save unit. Next, we have Eldigan, who is... Arguably one of the best Aether Raids defense dancers that we have in the game. Thanks to the fact that his defense is so high. Because his defense is so high, he can avoid Mila most of the time, if not all the time, with proper investment. And because he's also a Lance unit, he can also run Wagasa, which is just chill defense. And given that Mila is going to be stacking up her defense so much, more than likely she'll be hit by Wagasa pretty much all the time, making it so you can't isolate Eldigan by any means. The only way you could definitely isolate them is with Bride Fjorm, but because she is so rare and she is in a mythic, you aren't going to be seeing her nearly as much as Mila, especially if you run them on Dark Season because of the fact that you wouldn't be running both Mila and Fjorm at the same time. And that's pretty much the reason he's up here. He's just basically one of those dancers that's hard to isolate, which is really, really nice to have around. And because he also has a lot of defense, if he does end up having to enter combat against a melee foe, chances are they're not going to be doing damage to him whatsoever. Next we have Young Innis, who is definitely one of the more popular units that we got this year because of the fact that his bow is just so crazy good. Having Slang with null damage reduction on special triggers is extremely potent because of the fact that he can always have an instant special ready due to being an infantry unit, meaning he can run Times Pulse and trigger a 2 cooldown special at the start of combat. 
with no issue whatsoever. This also makes him immune to pulse smoke and because of the fact that he has no damage reduction, the only way you're going to be tanking him is through just sheer defense stacking. Chances are he's just going to be outputting a lot of damage and because he is infantry he could also run no follow up if he wants to prevent guaranteed follow up attacks from armor foes. He could also run sturdy impact with no follow up to just secure the guaranteed follow up negation. In any case, because he has really strong offenses on top of having no damage reduction and being infantry with slaying, he's definitely one of the better investments you can have for an Aether Raid's defense archer, especially if you use him on a Patria ball. And then finally, for the best investment units, we have Kemp who is basically here because of his weapon. There's really not much else to it. The fact that he can just inflict flash and savage blow just from tapping a unit is extremely potent because it can shut down a lot of strategies from melee specialists as well as near save armors. The only unit it won't affect is Fiorm because she has no counter disrupt in their weapon, but outside of that, you won't be struggling against melee foes that much because of the fact that he just shuts them down. You can always stack up his attack and speed with an Aether Raid's defense skill, like Aether Raid's defense attack speed 4, attack speed solo, yada yada yada, give him wind sweep. You can also give him fatal smoke with deflect melee, as the goal isn't necessarily the kill, it's to survive and then inflict all these statuses. Basically, he's just one big status bot, and it's extremely good. Even though he's been power crept by Niffle, he can still do a lot of wonders on budget. And that's about it for the best investments. Next we'll go into solid investments where we do have a, li a little bit more variety. To start us off in the solid picks category, we have the Black Knight, who has a slaying distant counter weapon with Spectrum 4. He has access to Black Luna, which is then turned into a 2 cooldown special because of the fact that he has slaying in his weapon. He can run Steady Breath with Near Save and Attack Defense Unity, so that every time he gets initiated on, provided that there isn't any guard, he can always retaliate with a Black Luna. And if he does end up doubling, chances are the foe is not going to survive two Black Lunas. He is a counterpart to Arden in a sense, where they both do a really solid job as acting as a Near Save unit. However, the differences just vary between the fact that Arden does have dual phase brave and guaranteed follow up attacks with his follow up ring, which allows him to act in both phases. While the Black Knight can always retaliate with an instant special, and provided that he does double, he could always trick. He could potentially trigger it twice if the foe can double, meaning that he is able to take out his foes relatively well. I would say not as well as Arden because Ignis bombing is just way stronger in my opinion, but still really good nonetheless. However. I don't think you will go wrong with either of them because of the fact that they both do a really significant job at just acting as a near save unit. But in any case, yeah, the reason Black Knight is up here is because he has a 2 cooldown Black Luna that he can trigger on every initiation. Next we have Brunya, who is a really solid unit overall because of the fact that she can just negate debuffs. However, that could be considered a bad thing if you want to run Unity since it does not work with Fimble Venter. That being said, you can still stack up her attack and speed, she has really good res, she is immune to debuffs, she gets Spectrum 4 from her weapon, and because she's infantry she could also access stuff like no follow up and no counter disrupt if you really want to run her as a mage tank. Simply put, she is just a really big stat ball. She does have low defense, which can be a problem against stuff like Legendary Leaf and other stuff that targets her defense from afar. However, as a mage tank that can just ignore debuffs, it's very, very potent. And if you run her with a near save unit, chances are you're not going to have trouble sweeping a lot of maps. Next we have Winter Cecilia, who has access to all the armor skills and courtly mask, meaning she has damage reduction as well as a lot of overall defense and res if initiated on. There is a bit of competition when it comes to just far save units in general these days because of Ascended Fiorm who could just target every single unit from afar because of null counter disrupt. But because Cecilia is a dagger unit, she can have access to Courtly Mask which is really good just for overall survivability. And because she is slow, there is a, chan there is a good chance that she is going to be doubled meaning that she is going to be able to trigger Iceberg on every second hit provided that there isn't any guard or any impacts but in any case she shouldn't have that much trouble tanking because of the fact that she does have really high res and workable defense. You can always give her goody boot if you want to increase it even more however I feel that courtly mask is just better because it not only grants additional attack and res but it also just has flat damage reduction which is really good but in any case Cecilia is just a really really solid far save 
budget unit that you can use for Grails if you really like her. She doesn't have any color weaknesses, however she is weak to Windsweep, which can be a problem every so often if you're going up against a Selena. However, outside of that, she's still really, really good. Felix is also up here for similar reasons, except instead of having low speed, he actually has really decent speed. He has access to bows, which means he can access Spendthrift and increase his offensive and defensive pressure way, way more. He can run double distance defense with special fighters, meaning he could trigger Moonbow so long as there isn't any impact because of special fighters ability to accelerate cooldown much quicker. So even if there is guard on the foe, he could trigger on the second hit. And generally speaking, he just becomes really, really bulky because of spend thrift and double distance defense. And he could take on a variety of foes because of it. The only thing I would worry about is the color. While not necessarily the worst can be troublesome at times, especially now with the new Ninja Corrin, who we may see on defenses because of the fact that she is just a Green Reinhardt, but outside of that, he is a really, really solid far save unit that you could also invest into if you're looking for a good far save unit. Now, Winter's Jafar may be a questionable choice up here because of the fact that he isn't nearly as bulky as Cecilia and doesn't have access to bows like Felix does. However, because of the fact that he does have access to Lethality and Ouch Pouch, he can actually run a really decent gimmicky set with steady breath support and take out his foes really, really easily because of the fact that he is really fast. The only thing that is going to stop him from triggering lethality is going to be impacts because he won't be able to double through it because he doesn't have a guaranteed follow-up attack. But because Ouch Pouch does start out lethality at two cooldown, steady breath support will always allow him to trigger it on the first or second hit depending if there's guard, meaning that he shouldn't actually have trouble taking out foes. The only issue may just be survivability because his res isn't necessarily the highest. However, outside of that, you could always stack it up with Distant Defense 4 and Speed Res 4, which should bolster it really, really well. However, as the days keep going, we keep getting more foes with higher and higher attacks, so it may be questionable at times. But even so, being able to trigger Lethality pretty much guaranteed, unless there's impact, is really really solid for just sweeping foes in general. Next we have George, who's actually not that bad of a check on Aetherade's defense, similar to Young Innis. The only difference is that he doesn't have the null damage reduction, but because he has slang and really decent bulk, he can actually run a ruptured sky set with sturdy impact and sturdy blow and no follow up so that he can actually survive retaliations if he doesn't kill and because he does provide support with daniel made bow as well he can actually support his allies in a catria ball if you really want to do that too the only thing i would worry about is his speed stat but if you are running him on the catria ball then he is going to double regardless the idea here is that you will just be surviving a lot of attacks from foes that target his defense because of the fact that sturdy impact with sturdy blow is just going to bolster his defense like crazy and because he has slang he can also run time spells and trigger ruptured sky really really easily and that's about it when it comes to george he's just a really solid unit in general and if you really wanted to use him in arena you could do that too with blue dual infantry since being a ranged unit with that type of stat line isn't bad by any means next we have julius who got a really really solid refine with that just grants a bunch of stats and inflicts a bunch of stats in general, as well as having access to Dragon Ball, meaning he can actually become really, really, really bulky, even on the defensive side, even if it seems kind of low, because of the fact that chances are he's just going to get the flat 40% no matter what. The only thing stopping him from being in the best investments is the fact that he doesn't have a guaranteed follow-up attack. Even though you could invest in his speed, I find that you're better off stacking up his attack in res, so you can focus on being a solid mage tank with a Null C to and joint distant guard and chances are if the foe can double anyway whether that's with more speed or just a guaranteed follow-up attack he'll be able to trigger iceberg on the second hit provided that there isn't any impacts but generally speaking he's basically a red makaya in a sense where he is just really really tanky against ranged magic threats and he has damage reduction which really helps the only thing he is missing in my opinion again is just the guaranteed follow-up attack but outside of that he is really, really, really solid as a null counter disrupt unit. Next, we have Masked Marth, who's basically, I guess you would say, budget Lucina in a sense, or more expensive Krom, whichever you prefer. Basically, if you don't want to build a Krom, you could build a Masked Marth. Both do the job very well, except the only difference is that Krom just has more defense while Lucina has more speed. So you can run her as a more secure Spurn tank, whether that's in Arena or just as an Omni tank. Even though Omni tanking has kind of fallen off a bit, you can give her Distant Counter with Spurn and Joint Drive Attack and Speed Rest Solo, meaning you could just bolster her overall stats and secure the 40% Spurn. Something that is going to shut her down is Young Innis, 
because of the fact that he just does have null damage reduction, which can be a problem for sprint tanking in general. You also have dual lift who will shut her down because of the fact that he not only has a guaranteed follow up attack, meaning he can potentially bypass sealed falchion, but also he just has damage reduction nullification in a sense, where he reduces the amount of damage reduction a unit can get. Not fully, but to a significant degree. And because of the fact that Spurn Tanks also rely on healing from specials, chances are run running her as a Spurn Tank isn't necessarily the best. However, you can still run her as a melee specialist if you really wanted to invest into that because of the fact that she does get plus 10 defense from her weapon. So you can replace this encounter with something like Steady Posture and then Spurn or Null Follow Up if you really, really want to run her like that. But in any case, she's still a really, really solid sword unit regardless. And if you don't want to build a Krom or a Lazo or a Selleth, then she could be your next best option. And then finally, for the solid picks, we have Shamir, who is only up here because of the fact that she scores 185 BST. If you're going to invest into a unit that does perform really well, you should at least also consider their arena viability because of the fact that they are going to be responsible for getting a lot of rewards in arena, in arena assault. So having Shamir up here is definitely worthwhile because of the fact that she does score really, really well. And chances are, she will age really well because of the fact that 185 BST is really secure nowadays. If you do want to build a Spartan tank that has access to a lot of good weaponry and scores really well, Shamir is your best bet. And that's it for the solid investments. Now for the final category we'll pretty much cover is good investments. We have a lot more over here so it's going to take quite a bit to get through as well so hopefully you strapped in. First off we have Arvis who is one of the few magic broadleaf users that we have in the game. Broadleaf with the amount of attack and speed that he has is actually really solid due to the fact that he can actually just end up dealing so much damage in general, whether that's in the player phase or enemy phase. And because of the fact that he has a lot of resistance, he can actually just tank as well if you really want to run him like that. He has the flexibility to be ran as a mage tank. Personally, I would run him in arena because of the fact that he does perform really well being due to the fact that he is a ranged unit and because visible buffs are so prevalent having the ability to debuff your foes is actually going to be really good for damage output because of the fact that the foes are just going to be bolstered through rallies that isn't even to mention the fact that valve flame is just unconditional debuffs to attack and res meaning that no matter what as long as he's within a certain proximity he will be able to debuff the foes and output a lot of damage in general this can actually work really well in aether raids as well as a mage tank if you really want to run him instead there with a null counter disrupts because of the fact that he can just run skills that increase his attack and res and speed and then nuke from the enemy phase next we have ashard who is honestly one of the worst combat units in the entire game in my opinion because of the fact that he's just an enemy phase flyer with a mediocre combat prf however the reason he's up here in good investments is because of the fact that his prf is just attack defense run meaning he can actually act as a really solid support unit rather than anything else. However, because of the fact that he is just tethered to being a support unit, there really isn't much you really need to run on him besides attack defense Rhine as you can stack it up with Gagurant. You could stack up his resistance and also run a sabotage if you really want to do that. In any case, if you're going to run Ashard, you don't really need to also plus 10 him. However, if you want to and you want to run him as a carry with near save or far save support, you can always do that. Personally, I would run something else rather than him for melee specialist roles. However, if you are gonna run him, I personally would advise going with the support role rather than anything else. Next, we have Aversa, who has Aversa's Knight, which is actually really good for arena purposes. That's the reason she's up here. Because she has Sun Panic with the additional debuff to all to all stats, she can actually be a really solid arena unit with our dual flying four. She may not score the highest, but because of the fact that she does have Sun and Panic in her weapon means that she can actually function as a really solid support unit for those purposes. You could also give her Speed Res Rhyme with Swift Sparrow too if you do want her to act in combat as well. She also doesn't have to really worry about her B passive but all too much because of the fact that she wants to have as much HP as possible so a versus Knight can go off. So she's one of the few ranged flyers in the game that doesn't have to really worry about that. And besides that... There's really not much else. I personally wouldn't run her in Aether Raids because of the fact that she's just kind of fallen off there. But as an arena unit, she's still really good in my opinion. Next we have Kaelic, who's actually not that bad for scoring as well. 
However, because of the fact that Shamir just scores outright better, I put him one below, even though outside of speed, their stat line is pretty similar. You could pretty much just run Kalik as an arena bot. Kalik still benefits from the fact that he scores 180 BST with Mergent, so you don't have to run Green Duel Infantry 4 with him. You could just give him Disencounter with Quick Repose and stack up his attack, defense, and res, so he becomes a really solid tank. That's the reason we have him up here because of the fact that he does score well, but because he doesn't score as well as Shamir does, I have him one below, but that's really it. Outside of like the one extra bin, he's still a good pick. So if you really want to build him, you really couldn't go wrong with it. However, if you are focused on just scoring in general, just go with Shamir. Next we have Dorcas, who's actually a really solid near save unit because of the fact that he has really high defense and access to Love Candelabra, which just increases his attack and defense even more. His attack set's actually really high, which means he can actually output a lot of damage. And because of the fact that he is just an armor, he could just run the typical Steady Breath near save set with Ignis, so he could trigger it on every second hit, provided that there isn't any guard. It's in a similar vein that we have to Arden, except for the fact that Arden can always trigger it because of the fact that he has dual phase brave. However, as an armor unit that has access to all sorts of axes, he can actually end up being nearly as bulky, if not more bulky than Arden in some cases. However, when it comes to just overall damage output, Arden is your go-to unit. In any case, he's still not bad as a near save unit, so if you did want to invest into him, you could. We also have Eliwood, who's going to function similarly to the rest of the near save armors, where you want to stack up his defense. The only difference here is that he actually has workable speed, so you don't necessarily have to run Sturdy Stance with Slaying Lance and Steady Breath and Bonfire. Rather, you can replace his Lance with something else and then run Ignis with Steady Breath and then maybe Steady Posture. Or you could also even give him Special Fighter. However, I do prefer having a guaranteed follow-up attack, even with the speed, so even if there is an impact present, he can still bypass it if he has to make a speed check, provided that the foe isn't faster in general. However, his defense isn't nearly as high as someone like Dorcas or Arden, so he may not be able to do as much damage. However, because of the fact that he, again, he does have speed, he does have flexibility when it comes to just his overall builds. So you could stack up his speed and defense if you really wanted to, and then run Ignis instead, so he ends up dealing more damage. Next we have Finn, who's actually a really solid player phase unit because of the fact that he has dual phase brave and lull in his weapon, meaning that he can actually function really, really well as a player phase unit. There are two reasons why I don't have him higher. One, because of the fact that he's locked as a calf, meaning that he is going to just function as a player phase unit. And because of the fact that his weapon requires him being over 25% or more, chances are you don't want to run him as a vantage unit because of the fact that his bulk isn't nearly as good due to the fact that he also gets a penalty on his weapon. And second, because of the fact that he doesn't have necessarily the highest attack. I would argue that because of the fact that he only has 34 base attack with a 10 might weapon that also can grant an additional plus 4 to his attack. Even if he can potentially quad, I still feel that he isn't really going to be outputting as much damage as he should. And if he ends up not killing on the first two hits, chances are he could die in the retaliation. However, as a unit, he's still not bad by any means. So if you do want to invest into him, then by all means, go for it. I don't think I'm really going to go over Flame Emperor as much because of the fact that it's just basically a copy pasta version of Dorcas, just updated BST. You can still run Sturdy Stance 3 or Close Defense with Ignis, Slick Fighter, and Attack Defense Near Save with, with Love Candelabra and Steady Breath. There really isn't much difference. The same reasons I applied to Dorcas is going to apply to Flame Emperor. However, the difference between someone like Dorcas and Flame Emperor is that Flame Emperor still scores 180 BST, so you can still use them for Arena if you want to, and then score really well. And then same thing with Ninja Hana. Ninja Hana is actually really, really good still because of the fact that she has really good speed and mixed bulk. She's basically a bit worse Ninja Shamir, and the only reason, again, that I have her down in the good tier as opposed to solid is because of the fact that she doesn't score nearly as well as Shamir does which is why I don't recommend her nearly as much. If you are going to build her for Arena, then you do want to run Shamir instead. However, if you like Hana, there's no reason not to go for Hana, because they both still score relatively well. Next, we have Iago, who can actually be ran as a really decent support unit over Aversa. They're both pretty similar in a sense because of the fact that they both have debuffing tomes based off their HP stat. However, the difference between Iago and Aversa is that Iago actually has a really high res stat, so you can actually run him with a Sabotage if you really want to. And because he's infantry, you can run him with infantry pulse if you want to do that too. He has a bit more flexibility when it comes to his support. However, Aversa has a bit more consistency. Personally, I do like Iago a bit more because of the fact that it does also work if the foe is solo. 
Meaning that if you do need to deal with foes that are separated away, you don't have to worry about debuffing them because on certain turns, you, they will be able to get inflicted with guard and debuffs. So really, it'll just depend on consistency versus just overall more support. And to be honest, you really couldn't go wrong with either. Next, we have Linus, who's actually a really solid Gale Force unit now because of the fact that he has slang with basically the Sparking Tome effect in his weapon, which prevents speed and the Defense, visible buffs on the foe, and you can inflict speed defense penalties on the foe during combat, meaning that chances are he's going to be doubling most of the time, if not all the time, and now putting a significant amount of damage. And because of the fact that he is infantry, he can run Tempest skills for Arena, or as a unit in Aether Raids, because of the fact that he doesn't need time spells since he has slang. Heavy Blade 4 is going to be really good because of the fact that he does have really, really high attack, and attack speed solo is just going to help bolster that. The only issue I may find with him is that he may have a chance at one-shotting units because of the fact that he just debuffs their defense for a lot. But in any case, Linus is still a really, really solid Gale Force unit, and I would definitely recommend him if you are looking for a decent Gale Force unit. Next, we have Marissa, who's actually also up here for Gale Force shenanigans because of the fact that she's basically female in the bar. However, because of the fact that she doesn't get its curtains effect in her weapon, she ends up at most having a one cooldown special Gale Force, which isn't bad by any means because of the fact that she can still trigger Gale Force really, really easily. And she doesn't have to worry about one-shotting because of the fact that she can still Gale Force with Flashing Blade 4. You really couldn't go wrong with her as a Grailian it because of the fact that she is just a really solid Gale Forcer. And it may seem kind of contradictory to use her as a Gale Forcer because of the fact that she gets true damage based off her special. However, I find that because she does have slang and time spells that you have you will have an easier time triggering Gale Force with her than almost any other unit in the game. <laughs> you fool! And in another unit for Gale Force, we have Young Minerva with Dragoon Axe. Dragoon Axe isn't necessarily the best weapon. However, because she is a flyer, she can access a lot of stuff that can help her Gale Force in Arena. She has really good attack, which is really nice, which means she can actually run Heavy Blade really, really well. Dive Bomb can be good if you want to get her attacks out and ready to go, so she doesn't have to worry about retaliations. And then she can also run Attack Defense Ryan, so not only is her Heavy Blade check much easier to meet, but she can now put more damage and take care of the foe much more easily. You could also run G Dual Flying 4 on her if you really want to, just for extra scoring. And it wouldn't be bad because it does grant extra attack and speed, so you don't have to worry about doubling all too much. However, Swift Sparrow 3 is still a really good option for her, as it does grant a significant amount more. Next we have Summer Norn, who's also up here because of the fact that she does score really, really well. She's basically a counterpart to Ninja Hannah because they both have access to similar weapons as well as score relatively the same. And that's the reason we also have her up here. Her mixed bulk is actually pretty decent. She has really high speed. She has good attack. There's really not much else to say on it. She's basically blue Ninja Hannah, but because of the fact that she scores the same, I had to put her up here as well. And then, because we went over the same reasons with Arvis, we are going to cover Sias as well with the same thing. And you can run them as an arena bot with War God's Tome, same reasons with Sabotage Speed and Defense Ploy. They're basically the same unit, except the only difference is that one's blue and one's red. And there's like maybe a bit of res and that's about it. You can run them in Aether Raids as a Mage Tank with no counter disrupt. And because of the fact that he just has unconditional debuffs to attack and res within three columns and three rows, chances are he's going to be outputting a lot of damage in general. Ursula is going to be a bit interesting too because of the fact that while she doesn't have unconditional debuffs in her weapon, she still has access to Broadleaf on top of the fact that she does have cavalry effectiveness, meaning she can actually be ran as a close foil vantage unit if you really want to use her like that. So she could take out calves like Legendary Sigurd. She could take out calves in general because she has cavalry effectiveness. You can run her with Attack Res Menace so you can make up for her attack. You could also run her with Blue Dual Cav if you really want to run her in Arena. She's not bad by any means. I would definitely say Sias and Arvis are better because of the fact that they do have unconditional debuffs on top of the fact that they just have more speed and attack and res. However, being a cav isn't bad by any means because she does have the movement perks. So you could actually use her on Aether Raid's defense if you really wanted to because she can debuff the foes and output a lot of damage. However, I would still be wary of that because of the fact that armors can run Slick Fighter, which just negates any sort of debuff that they get. Voltaire is also going to be up here for Gale Force, but more so due to the fact that he has recoil damage in his weapon. 
which can stack with Fury 4. And that's really good because he can set himself up as a Wings of Mercy beacon really, really easily, especially if he does get hit by a foe when he initiates combat. Wyvern Flight's there because of the fact that he has really solid defense. He can run attack speed Rhine, so he can secure doubles and heavy blade checks. He doesn't really have to worry about damage output because of the fact that his attack is just really good. And in general, as a Wings of Mercy beacon, he's really, really good because of the chip damage. You will have to rely on either taking damage from a foe when you double, when you initiate combat, or landing on a bolt trap. However, if you are landing on the bolt trap, then you can pretty much make anyone a Wings of Mercy beacon. But in any case, he's actually a really solid Gale Force unit because of the fact that he does have a lot of chip damage, he has slang, he has a really high attack and speed stat, and he can make heavy blade checks really easily. And then finally, when it comes to our good investments, we have Zephiel, who I would argue is the weakest of the near saves because of the fact that while he does have really min-max attack and defense, which actually puts him near Dorcas levels, he doesn't have nearly the same weaponry as the axes or lances do, which is a problem because of the fact that swords just don't have the best inheritables. I was looking through the builder, and the two best options were going to be Heartblade and Carrot Kujul. You can honestly run either or, but the point is, is that he just doesn't have too many options. Carrot Kujul does grant additional attack and defense over Heartblade, and it does grant debuff immunity to attack and defense. However, because he can run Carrot Kujul and get debuff immunity to his attack and defense, he can run Crafty Fighter with a different A slot instead. Basically, it's just going to come down to the weapon that he uses. If he uses Heart's Blade, you can run Sturdy Stance 3 with Slick Fighter, as he'll get debuff immunity from that and guard. However, if you're using Carrot Kujul, you can swap out his Slick Fighter for something else. There really isn't much, personally, when it comes to the B passive, when it comes to the Fighter Skills, because you're either running Crafty or Slick for the most part. Not only for the guaranteed follow-up, for, but for also the debuff immunity or guard, which is also why I chose Heart's Blade in this set. However, you couldn't go wrong with Carrot Kujul because it grants additional attack and defense over Heart's Blade, and it has debuff immunity. However, you may just run into a bit of overlap, which may be a bit of an issue. However, as a near save unit, he's really, really solid. And that's about it when it comes to the first three tiers. As for the OK investments, they can have a niche of their own. However, I feel that it's not nearly as good or it's a bit weaker than some of the good investments. Like, for example, Lifus does perform pretty much the same as Ninja Hanna. However, because he doesn't score 180 with merges, I put him in the okay investments because of the fact that he just doesn't score nearly as well and will need green dual infantry four. Meanwhile, there's also just the niche category, which while they can have their moments, I find that their performance isn't nearly as good or they don't score nearly as well. So I don't believe they aren't necessarily worth the investment, but they can be worthwhile in some scenarios. And then in the only if you like them tier, basically I find that they don't have anything going for them at the moment. So unless we get some sort of refine or new weaponry or skills, then maybe we could change their position. However, at the moment, I just find that their performance is just really, really lackluster and they don't really have anything going for them. So I really wouldn't invest into them unless you like them, which is why I said only if you like them. And at the beginning, I did mention that you should only invest in units that you want to invest into. But that's about it for the Grail tier list. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think some places are justified? Do you think some should move up, move down? Do you want this to be an ongoing series when we get more Grail units? Let me know down below, and until next time, I'll see you later!